So, we've not actually gotten to the ending yet, amazingly. <laughs> yeah. But that's pretty much how most people lead off with it, but... The ending. Did Tony dies. Tony clearly dies. Every... <laughs> every single bit of evidence before, like, shows that it, like, collaborates the fact that he dies. What do you think? Because you must have had that opinion when it was on. I take the arsehole opinion that it could be either, or it could be one or the other. No. It, it, it depends on your own personal beliefs and what you've got to have a show. So like I was talking to someone at work, yeah, uh, and he's a firm believer that Tony lives. That's, inc that's insane. Let's see, I, I, I disagree because yeah. he, I think the strong signs either way. Yeah. I think it's open to interpretation. No. I think you could apply your own personal opinions and your own personal beliefs and ultimately make your own decision. That's what makes it so brilliant. Yeah. This guy says, you know, like, it, it's almost like um, a trick. It's yeah. like, um, you know, it's just a scene where him and his family go and they have a nice meal together and he happens to see a guy holding a gun. And it's a visual reminder that I can never have a normal life. I can yeah. never... And he gave a very strong case for it. Now, I'm sure you can give a very strong case yeah. for it. But I, I, can, I can have a case against that, though. No, I'm, I'm sure yeah. you could, but that, that's what makes it so great, is that yeah. it's open to interpretation. Like I talked about Blade Runner in the last video, like, is Deckard a replicant or not? And yeah. I think ultimately it really matters, because it's up to you to decide. Yeah. Um, personally, I would be liable to say that he probably does die. Yeah. Like, but the same, because the, the character practically is dead at that point anyway. Yeah. So, m metaphorically it makes sense. But I, I, I take the approach that it's interpretable and it's up to you to decide. It's, a, it's, a, it's an individual viewer's choice and there is no right or wrong answer in my opinion. Yeah. Um, okay. I disagree and think he does die. And I think, every, I think the whole thing is though, you have to think of the show, what it's trying to say thematically as much as that. And I don't think the interpretation that he, he's looking over his shoulder works. Because if you watch the scene, he doesn't look over his shoulder, he's content as he ever is. He never, he never looks at the other people, the camera does, but he sort of, he looks briefly at AJ and sees that other guy come in. But if you actually look at where he is, he's like content, he's, all, he's joking around with his family and stuff. And the whole purpose of it is that he's, he's become numb to even caring. Like, I think the whole purpose of the scene is he's numb to caring, this guy's got a perfect view of him and it kills him. And it, the irony is he dies in front of his family to underline a point that, he basically, he made, in, in the first episode, it was all about him making this choice between his family or his work. And the whole show is about that sort of... That's why the show is so powerful in the end of the day. Because it's all... It, it could have just been about an arsehole mobster. But it's about this man who sort of has this... He has to choose between his work life and his family life. And it's this stuff that perf anyone can relate to. And, but I think at the end of it, he's chosen, he's chosen his work. But he'll die in front of his family, traumatising him forever. And the whole, the, the last season is about Tony's relationship with his father, in many ways. Because it's about how, like, the AJ stuff is there to com to counterpart how AJ is sullen and depressed and useless. And, a and Anthony at the time was the same. You, you get these, like, little indications of that. But because his father was even more of an arsehole than him, he never had, like, a way to express that. He just got beaten up. Like, they can't do constant references to the fact that Tony wants to beat him up, but Carmelo won't let him. And about how sort of the counterpart between his father and who he is as a father. And that's all there to build up the ending where Tony's given up completely and must die in front of his family. Because that's how it has to end. Like it's a fight between his sort of choosing the right way. Which would have been to go with a psychiatrist to become help to stop being a mobster. Or to die traumatising his family the last thing he had left. And also like the way it sort of like he's like the scene before that. No, not directly before that. There's one way he's talking to Meadow. Remember his asshole daughter. I remember Meadow well, yeah. I didn't know if you knew the name though. No, I remember Meadow. And like Med Meadow's an unforgettable character. <laughs> yeah. She actually is. She is she annoying. Is. She's so annoying. She's the most annoying character yeah. in the whole show. Well Med I was just see where Are you in the Mafia? <laughs> Are you in the Mafia? <laughs> and I remember as well where oh, I know Carmella's like are you applying to college yet? Yeah. And she's like, no, I'm not doing it. And then she applies for like a really like Nambi Pambi like psychologist, philosopher. That's it. That's yeah. one of the best episodes. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. 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 Um, but um, yeah, what's brilliant is they have this scene where 
So Meadow has represented Tony's way of, even though he can't be saved, his family can. Mm. And you know how he always pushed her to do like medical school and said about how being like Dr. Soprano would have been great and about how he basically wanted her to do something more with her life, even if he couldn't say it so, like consciously, that's what he wanted. And then she sits across from him and says she's going to be a lawyer defending um, the mob. And he sort of like, just, he, he, like, it's the best acting I think Jane Gandolfini's ever given. He just looks like he's like just doesn't care anymore, and it's just heartbreaking. It just stops him for five minutes. I think that's an important scene because it's like he's lost everything at that point. And that's the only thing he cared about anymore. When that's taken off him, I think that plays into why he doesn't care at the end. Yeah. So I think that's the the whole purpose of like it is is to rid him of things. So when he dies, it's more tragic because he has no way of writing things. Like the show is all about like death. It's all about what what this character can do before he dies and. He basically, throughout the show, like, one of the main things and one of one of the most popular sayings is, like, he gives this speech about how there's two ways for a guy like him to go to jail or to die. And it was all about this fatalism he had. So in the end of it, he clearly, he, he just, he, he's clear, I think it's clear he dies. There's so many, like, references to the fact he dies. It works so well thematically. I've not watched the episode in about five or six years, so I don't think I can... Give my opinion until I've rewatched it. Everything thematically just builds the fact he dies, and everything within the sort of episode. That's the thing. So from like what I remember, like the, the the whole last season is about the ending and collapse of things. So thematically, it makes sense. And also the way it would just destroy his like what's even what's what's really clever is the fact that you know do you remember the scene where Meadow struggles to park, right? No. Well, basically, it's what's so brilliant about last scene is it's so tense because it's like everyone walks into that diner. And then Meadow struggles to park, and the last shot is her going in, and it's Tony, and that's when it ends. It's Tony looking up at Meadow, she's up there. Meadow would have sat next to him in the way of the gun, so that's what's brilliant about it. Meadow can't be there in time, so he gets killed, because Meadow wasn't there. She would have been in the way of where the bullet would have gone, so it probably wouldn't have happened. So in a way, it's like the fact that he'd lost the thing, the thing he cared most about, the thing that stopped him from caring is Meadow, and Meadow's the one who wasn't there in time, so Meadow caused him to die inadvertently. So it makes it makes a brilliant sort of... Because she would have sat across... Because the whole... The geography, I, 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 I can't visualise the, the scene, geography so. of the, the geography of the scene is they're sat here, the toilet where the, the, the shooter guy goes into is there, and then the seat where Meadow would have been would be there. So, like, if you look at it, like, gunshot, bang, like that, Meadow would have been sat next to Tony, stopping the, you know, like where the gun would have been, probably resulted in it not having happened, because Meadow would have been like in the way. But you know, walks out, kills him, walks out, because Meadow isn't there. So the fact that he has lost Meadow now to becoming what everything he hated her, from her to be, and the fact she's not a doctor then, she's she's becoming an instrument in this crime, going into this world, the one thing he didn't want, and to have her be the one who inadvertently resulted in him being dying is like brilliant. But it's, it's so, I mean, you could talk about, like, these episodes for hours. Every single one of them is so... Well, maybe, 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 it's, maybe when we finish Deadwood, that could be next. <laughs> sopranos. Yeah, because we, we, we've only ever looked at Sopranos at all, because obviously I have not, because I've not seen them yeah. for nearly a decade now. So, yeah. uh, yeah, I mean, it'd be good to revisit and do each episode, because there is so much you could say. There is, it is so dense. Let's it's do amazing. that after Deadwood. We will do. Yeah, you, you're hearing it now, folks, that's the announcement. When... When we finish Deadwood, it's Sopranos next. And I can talk about... I could talk about the Sopranos for hours. Yeah, I, it's not my favourite. It's not... I'm, my my favourite TV show would be Deadwood followed by The Sopranos. But The Sopranos is just incredible stuff. It's just amazing. But yeah, anyone who hasn't seen Season 6 Part 2, I think it's the second best season after Season 5. Which is a lot of fans' worst ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Season 5 is... that all where Steve Buscemi appears? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I can see the criticisms, but I love it. Yeah. I love how kind of just weird it gets. It's is, really... is that one where like, Tony's in a coma for most of it? No, that's season that's six, part one. Oh, oh yeah. Because yeah. that's, that's what results in, like, that's when he's it. away. Oh, yeah, because, yeah, cause, like, at the end of that season, like, he, he goes to the house, doesn't he? His mother's waiting for him. And that's it's, brilliant. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he's in a coma, and yeah, so that's it. But yeah, we'll watch The Sopranos after, because it's so great and dense and beautiful. But yeah, this is it. It's most dense. This is it, it's most ambiguous, even though it's the last season. This is, this is like, if you hate The Sopranos for its ambiguities, watch season one. But if you thought season one was a bit too narrow, a bit too sort of, Season one is the show at its most sort of, 
And now to this guy, it's the one that's most crowd pleasing. Yeah, yeah. This is it at its most. This is like a 70s art film. <laughs> it places its borderline avant garde. Like, there's one episode, um, which is absolutely stunning, called Kennedy and Heidi, which is like an art film where it's the one where Tony kills Christopher. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then he goes off to Vegas and has like a metaphorical sort of. Oh, yeah. He takes peyote and screams yeah. in the desert, going, um, what is it? I get it, I get it. And like, he's screaming in the desert and stuff. And then, like, it's just amazing. All of it's all visual, and, like, it's just, it's incredible. This is incredible television. To be honest, if The Sopranos was a bit more, a bit less hit and miss, it probably would be my favourite show. Like, um, Deadwood Season 2 is better than this, but this is just incredible stuff, this. I mean, like, I, I think this might be my second favourite season of television ever. Well, third after the fifth season of Sopranos, but it's just incredible. Wait till we get to the misses. Wait till we get to what? The misses. Oh, some of the misses are... <laughs> the Sopranos is the HBO show that had the worst episodes, like the, the Christopher. Miss, the misses that come to mind are the one where he tries to get his script made by that director appears in it. John Favreau. John, John Favreau. d girls are rubbish episodes. Yeah, I remember that one. The, uh, I think the Johnny Cake storyline. And the uh, Christopher Columbus, Columbus, Columbus yeah, that's episode, rubbish. Yeah. This, which, which, sadly for me, this is the one that's sticking behind the most. But as I just remember thinking, huh, huh. Yeah. Uh, the rest of it, I just remember as being this incredibly, amazingly sustained show, and there's certain shots. But you know, I, there's only a few certain episodes like I, I can remember as like individual episodes. I only remember as yeah. This one plot point that always bothered me. Yeah. Which we'll get into it when we do our reviews. Is how all of a sudden Bobby and Janice get together. No, it's brilliant. Is that? Like, oh, no, I can't no, it, no, it's really subtle. No, is it? What? It, but it, no, that takes six episodes. I see. Because what happened? It's a whole. No, because because no, because like and and, and you know, it was the whole thing where like Janice is like helping Bobby come to terms, and then all of a sudden like they're married. It's like. That's I no. What happens is they uh, they get married over a maybe it's just for where I it's in it. between seasons. That's it. Yeah, that's what that's what threw me. I was like, oh, I, I guess they're married. Now. I like that, mate, because it gives a feeling that there's a world outside of what you're watching. True, but at the same time, it's like Bobby was so clearly like disturbed by the death. But I, 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 I think it works. Maybe it'll change your mind. I think it works it. better if you remember that the, the seasons are like set two years apart. Yeah, okay. So I think it works a little bit better then. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. You just have to go with it, I think. Yeah. It I never remember, bothered me, but... I remember the time thinking, oh, okay. I, I guess she's a now. horrible character. Oh, yeah, she's horrible, yeah. What's, what's brilliant all is the way that, like, the last... At the end, they're, like, doing really subtle visual motifs back to um, earlier stuff. Like, the last... the la This show could have ended at any point. This, the, the second to last scene is just as good as the last. It's one where um, Tony goes to see Junior. And it's this really sort of sad scene where Junior, you remember how he goes, he gets like Alzheimer's and goes out of yeah, his mind. Yeah. He's just, um, he's just looking out of a window, and Tony's like, "You used to run this town. You and my brother." And he's like, "That's nice." <laughs> and it's like this really sad scene where, like, this old, clearly like out of his mind guy is just being remembered of like former glories and stuff. Oh, but yeah, we'll review every episode. But yeah, if you've not seen season six, part two. But you've listened to, what the hell, must this have been half an hour or something? I think so. Rant about how great it is. Just go fucking watch it. It's amazing. And we'll watch the... What we should do is watch Deadwood, then The Sopranos, then The Wire. Yeah. And then we can talk about which is the best. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah. yeah. I've not seen The Wire, so... The Wire is the worst. But as I say, it is also the best. It's also, okay. It's right. the most important one. It's the one where you'll learn most about America. But, but it's the least entertaining. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's most lofty. Lofty. Well, it's sort of like a bit annoying. It's all about like it is really dense and sort of like really important, but it's just not as fun. Okay. It won't make you laugh as much as Deadwood. It <laughs> won't. It won't make. It won't like. You won't like like with the Sopranos. One of the best moment part about it is how emotional it can get. Yeah. And how much it really draws you in and like a, pe a lot of people say it's a cold show, but I never felt. That's like all. I remember is like the warmth of the characters and. It's clear the interactions. Well, we watched that episode recently, the Christmas oh, one. Oh, yeah, yeah, I love that one, yeah. Yeah, it's a brilliant episode, isn't it? And no one mentions, but it's also, like, warm and, like, yeah. slow. And you just but that, that's out. one of the things I, I just remember, is just the characters interacting with each other. And, yeah, sure, there's a lot of stuff between Tony and his family where they're quite, there's, like, a warm most of the times. But also between the mobsters, like, Mary and her family, I remember being just, like, warm and jokey and funny. And yeah. That's what I took from it, that's what I remember. But, yeah, it's great. But the, the wire hasn't. I, I don't really think it has that. 
Okay. I think it's more, it's that sort of one where you watch it as an, in an analytical, critical way, uh, as opposed to, you know, really getting into it. A lot of people disagree and think it's sort of really easy to get into and stuff, but it's probably the most popular one now. Mm. I've, I know more people who've seen The Wire, because The Wire has the best reputation. That's true. And it's the one that I think feels like unexplored territory most. Yeah. Like, see, I, I feel more about Deadwood. Wow. Like, unexplored territory, because no one really talks about Deadwood. No. Like, I, I feel the Sopranos and the Wise Woman people have almost overanalyzed. But the dead, Deadwood's difficult, isn't it? It's mm. difficult to get in. If you, if, like, it, it's off putting. De 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 Deadwood is, is like, the, like De Deadwood is difficult to get into, but it's incredibly rewarding when you stick with it. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, you know, no, I, said, I, I feel like with Deadwood, that's one where people have not really looked into it as much as Sopranos or The Wire. Yeah. yeah, everyone's written something about the wire being reflective of America. Yeah, but no one's really written about how Deadwood's reflective. Yeah, yeah, or even done a YouTube video about how Deadwood is. No, no, the next world territory is that. Yeah. Until we came along. Yeah, we're almost like the other characters of Deadwood, where we're exploring the frontiers of Deadwood, just as the characters are expanding their town into. Yeah. And explore but it's the Sopranos season six, six part, part two. two is perfect. It's nine episodes. One of which is um, about a nine, but the rest are tens. It's just, it's just amazing television. Like at this point, they were so confident, they had so much money like, to play with. They were just given so much control, but they actually knew what it wasn't like New Hollywood where they just pissed it off, no. pissed it about, and like they were really, really controlled and like they just, they basically utilized the control and money they had to do more, like to make it more dense, to make yeah. it more visually elusive, to make it more. So every every single moment of it is just perfect. It's it's just classic scene after classic scene after classic scene. It just just watch it. It's just amazing. It's not talked about as much as other seasons. Like if you really like one, two, and three are sort of the big sort of like, and then it sort of gets difficult, so people talk about it less. But it's just incredible television. Just watch it if you haven't, and if you have, post how much you love it. Because I'm sure if you've watched it and you like watching this, you must have enjoyed it. I mean, it's just an incredible season of television. But yeah, not the most easy one, but yeah, watch it.